I'm going to become immortal in hardcore by getting infinite hearts. Step one, I need emeralds. These can be obtained at the raid farm. That's enough of that, and that's enough of those. Now for step two, get some apples. The best place for them, the void trader. This guy sells them, and I buy them. Step three, this terrain has got to go. Starting with the trees. These two randomers. And now the rest of it. Now I need yellow terracotta. I could make a massive clay farm, or I could just murder villagers till one sells me it. I think you know what I'm gonna do. Perfect. You may live, and now I'm gonna get thousands from him. I can't believe infinite hearts has never been done before, and it's something you can do in your world. Step four, I need frog lights. And this is the perfect farm for that. Unless, of course, you're a magma cube. Three stacks will do. And whilst I'm in the nether, I need to grab a load of quartz. A stack is a good start, but I need plenty more. And all this will make 400 blocks, which can go into here and into the super smelter. I'll also make a new pickaxe for silk touch and make everything netherite. Next, it's timer time. One hour on the clock, and if I get 300 gold ore, you have to subscribe. And this just might be the perfect cave. Here's the first ones, and some more. Everything really is coming together. Although 300 is still quite far away, so thank goodness it's a very big cave. That's the first 100, but I'm way behind schedule, and I need to find a new area. Maybe 300 in an hour was a little bit too ambitious. Hang on a minute, this is exactly what I need. Half the time has already gone, I need an insane 10 minutes to get me back on track. That's 150, meaning I'm past halfway, and if I can get to 200 before 40 minutes, then I'll be back on track. But that's easier said than done. I've made it to 200, but finding another 100 in just 15 minutes is going to be so, so tight. I've made it to 250 with just 10 minutes left, and this cave might be the saviour that I need. It's going to be so, so close. That's 260, 270, 280. I'm getting so, so close. 290, I just need 10 more, and I've 7 minutes left. And now I, I can't seem to find gold anywhere. Just these stupid diamonds. Hang on a minute. It was five away. Now, hold on a second. I've done it. 300 gold in less than an hour. Now you have to subscribe. And there's a little bit more around here to be found too. Now for true immortality, the method needs a lot of notch apples. So I'm going to count them up. 96 is how many I have. Didn't know that. But I, I need more. And I've got a new strategy to get them. It involves mob switches for four different mobs. I'll start with the bat switch. But the most important thing is the location. Because if I fly past and load the chunks, then it will break. And before I do that, I have got some unfinished business. Which is to make it to level 737. Something I can do at my newest XP farm. After quite some time, I've made it to 606 levels. And I've realised... <laughs> Uh, it's going to take me a little bit longer to get to 737. So I'll revisit that project <laughs> some other time. Instead, I'm going to come down here and gather up a bunch of different materials. And that includes a lot more glass and also deep slate, redstone, observers, comparators, repeaters, pistons, dispensers, hoppers, note blocks, and much, much more. I'll start by removing this portal and building a much bigger one right here. Perfect. And it also needs a bit of glass on top. With the edge of the portal being here, I need to go five chunks in this direction, which is where I will build a bat farm. It's basically going to be a load of portals, but in order for bats to spawn, it'll have to be completely pitch black. But nether portals give off light, so how do you make them pitch black? You use light suppression. It's been a while since I've needed to use this machine, and I won't turn it on just yet until everything else is sorted. One thing I'm grabbing is amethyst shards, because I will need tinted glass. Next I box it in, but I'd leave a little gap here, since I need a way in and out to light the portals. Now for the next bit, sponge. This is basically going to work by sending bats through a portal, They'll be in the nether for a little bit, then be sent back through this portal. But I will be here, so this over here will be a lazy chunk where they come through. And mobs in lazy chunks don't despawn, and they count the mob cap. 
So that's why no more bats in the world would spawn and I'd just be chunk loading over here. It basically means I can't come within 500 blocks of that very chunk because then the bats would load and then they'd despawn. Everything would just go wrong. So a warning square to stay away needs to be built. This will also be way, way easier if I use lily pads so that scaffolding isn't necessary. I've seen straight lines, but I, I guess it'll do. Place them on land is, is much, much easier. The end is now starting to come into sight and the massive safety border is complete. Next, I add scaffolding to make an AFK platform right at the top here. The bats are already spawning, which is good. So I think it's now light suppression time. I'm not a fan of this machine since it, it does make everything laggy, but it's a small price to pay to make what I need. And from flicking that lever, I have one minute to get to where I need to be, otherwise chunks won't load. Since that hopper clock runs out after 100 seconds. All these scaffolding are very, very useful to find my way. I have arrived. Next, I wait for the light suppression to kick in. Chunks are now not loading, which tells me one thing. It tells me two things, actually. My game is broken. Apparently, I have an infinite firework rocket. But the light suppression is also happening. I'll, I'll just have to reload the game. Time to light all of these. Reload the world again. Next stop, I go through a portal. All the bats are here. I, I don't actually know if the farm worked, but the first priority is get the light suppressor turned back off. I hate this machine. It honestly takes so much relogging to get back to where you need to be. <laughs> but that's why I've got these ladders so that I can climb up even when it's laggy. Finally. Machine is off. Now for the moment of truth. Did it work? Nope, it did not, which means doing everything all over again. Moment of truth for take two. Yes, this time it has worked perfectly. Thank goodness for that. And it means I can now go through here, break this portal, and build the bat return system above the nether. This is where things get a bit more complicated. But I'll just start by building two nether portals. Got a piston and a bunch of glass here, followed by comparators, redstone, and more pistons. It is all nicely starting to come together, as you can see. And I can't believe it. Of all things, I forgot the glazed terracotta. And now work can resume. It's almost done. It's, it's starting to get a bit complicated, isn't it? But I need to grab a bunch of items that will go in dispensers and hoppers. And unless I've made any grave mistakes, it should all be done. Well, almost. This needs to be filled with minecarts. And a chunk loader needs to be built on this side. Job done. Quick and easy. Which means it's now time to test it out. I simply AFK up here for a minute or two as bats get sent to the nether. Then I swoop on down. Take one good look at this place because I can never come here again. And all the bats are inside the portal. Then I press this button and it, it should set everything off. Bunch of bats get pushed into that hole while their portal cooldown runs out. Once it does, the portal gets lit. They get sent through. I flip this lever to turn on the chunk loader. There we go. Minecart through. And the bats that switch is activated. I don't know how I can really show you, but no bats will now spawn anywhere in my world. It's only phase one in my new Notch Apple strategy, but it's also the most important one. Also, a quick side note, I'm gonna make this chest tinted glass. It was the only empty storage slot in the entire system, and uh, now it's filled. From there, I'm gonna take out one of these to use this XP farm and get loads and loads of levels. Beautiful, I have just made it in any moment to level 700. And that is enough of using the farm for now. Just use these extra bits of XP to make sure every single thing is fully repaired. And then I'll fly on home to sort the next project, which will be to build a giant mega palace right here where I will get the infinite hearts. Since doing this will require a little bit of a fancy machine. And that phantom just totally ruined my shot. Although the difficult thing is that this palace will be made out of a few thousand gold blocks. A few thousand gold blocks that I unfortunately don't have. So that could mean only one thing. First, I collect all the gold that has been gathered over time at this gold farm, which is apparently not very much. Well, that is a, a, a slight spanner in the works. So instead, I'll head to this gold farm. Disable the fortress farm by flicking that, which turns on every single redstone lamp. And instead, I start crafting all of these nuggets, which have been gathering over time, into ingots and blocks. And then I can just AFK here as the pigmen get me more. From being here for quite some time, I've got a decent amount of gold here and even more in this chest. I don't know if it'll be enough for the entire build. I also seem to remember that I put some quartz in here <laughs> a little while ago, a few... Well, however many days ago, uh, where will it be? In here? Perfect. The palace is going to be built right here. And as you can see already, it's going through my gold blocks fast. <laughs> Maybe I would have been better just using yellow concrete. Although if I did that, then it wouldn't look anywhere near as impressive. That's the foundation of the whole thing done. Next, I'm digging out the floor, which also conveniently gets rid of all of the snow. And also frog lights. Next, I'm going to dig out all of this, as well as the layer underneath. And then this is where all of the gold ore is going to come in handy. I wasn't just mining it for the good of my health. I needed it to fill in this entire pathway. And conveniently got over a stack to spare as well. That actually looks really, really cool, but on top of it, it will have stained glass. But I'll worry about that later. Instead, I'll focus on building up this second layer. And then the next one, and I would keep going, but I'm fresh out of gold blocks already. Not to worry though, I always keep an emergency supply in this ender chest. Nearly two stacks probably won't get me far, 
but it'll get me further than what I currently mapped and at least allow me to make progress on the next layer. And now, yep, I've, I've definitely run out of gold. There is going to be some of this build that includes yellow concrete. So I'll craft some powder, convert it and use it to build this little structure. There still needs more modifications and it will be where I do get my millions of hearts. However, the main issue going forward is I, I need way more gold blocks. I could destroy that entire mountain to get what I need, but no, I'm not going to do that because it's, it's too much hard work. Instead, I'm going to go back to this nether perimeter, stand right here, and let those guys get me loads and loads more gold. Loads more gold has come through to be turned into ingots. And from there, it can go into blocks. It's like all this gold just feels like it's never ending. And I think all this will definitely do me for now. I should 100% be able to finish the building. And once that's done, it'll be infinite hearts time. So I can continue this right here and continue layering everything up. That is me once again out of gold. It's definitely starting to come together, but it's uh, it's going to be a lot bigger than that. Maybe not the best idea to use gold blocks. I, I should have used yellow concrete. Not to worry, though, because I actually want to decorate this middle bit a bit more. And that will require red sand. Something of which I, I don't think I have a dedicated chest for. Okay, yeah, it's, it's definitely not one of these. Is there any lurking in the chest down here? Looks like the answer is no. <laughs> no, there isn't. Which means I must begin plan B and track down a mesa. Just have to remember, I can't go in a certain place over that direction because that's where the loads and loads of bats in a lazy chunk. Anywhere else, though, is completely safe to search. Not being much more than ocean at the moment. Oh, and I have come across one of my guardian farms. Still no mesa, but I have got a ruined portal. The worst ruined portal chest I've ever seen. So instead, I'll, I'll just keep flying. Hang on a minute. This looks to me like just what I'm looking for. Okay, well, it is what I'm looking for. Let's get busy collecting red sand. I don't need that much. Just enough to make red sandstone. And then I've, I've quickly got to fly all the way back home. And I just realized that I spent all that time getting a villager that would sell me yellow terracotta. There's an entire biome full of it. Yeah, next time I need clay... I know where to come, even if it is about 10,000 blocks away. I've got so far, and you know what, I've, I've realised something. Why don't I stop wasting time and instead build a portal and do some nether travel? And wow, it, it took me up there. I, I did not know that that was going to happen. And it's lined me up nicely to this area. Is that a sign for me to get a little bit more gold? So, you know, it'd be rude not to whilst I'm here. Go on then, I'll get a few more blocks. I just never seem to be able to get away from this place. And after a couple more days, I've got nearly four more stacks. Now to get back to what I was actually working on. Turning this red sandstone into the smooth variant. Then turning them into slabs and adding them around here. With that, it's starting to look pretty good. And I might as well add a few extra layers up here. The good thing is that as I get higher and higher, it is requiring less and less gold for each layer. Even though it's not a huge amount, I made a little bit more progress. Looking bigger and bigger all the time. Next, I think I should go and get stained glass. Colors needed are yellow, light blue, lime, magenta, and orange. Then they'll be placed diagonally along here, just repeating the colors over and over again so that it gives this cool rainbow effect. And the gold underneath kind of makes it look like stars. Oh, it's, it's just amazing. It absolutely does not get any better than this. And if you couldn't tell already, this golden palace is kind of based off a palace from Asgard. It just still needs to be made a, a, a lot, lot bigger. And whilst I haven't got the gold that I need, I could do a little bit more to the interior down here by grabbing a bunch of cauldrons, leaves, and buckets. Didn't expect to say this, but out of all of the things, leaves is going to be the one that I don't have enough of, since all the water can be added in no problem. And I can place some of these down, but I'm unfortunately missing seven of them, which logically could mean only one thing. I must head to an oak forest, get out some shears and get busy mining. I won't be having another leaf problem after this. Kind of makes it look like Hero Brian's been in the area, doesn't it? All these leafless trees. But anyway, I've got a lot of stacks. I, I don't know if I can count them all. Twelve and a half to be exact. And I also didn't want to continue anymore. Oh, don't crash into my house. But yeah, I didn't want to continue anymore in case I was to break my shears. So let's stock this up and keep seven for myself. Then add these to the build. So that's all I think I'm going to do for the interior. The only thing I might change is extend this rainbow road up to this. But if I'm going to do that, I'll do it right at the end when I've finished all the rest of that. And speaking of finishing all the rest of that, I'd first like to pop up on here to use the B-Tech Gold Farm, which is... Oh, I missed it, but it's um, it, it's a lot slower. Oh, don't go in there, you would die. Yeah, Entity Cramming would have killed me. You know, I, mean, I was very close to death there to say how calm I am. Anyway, I'm going to get these shears repaired. And I don't know why, but this farm is no longer giving me gold. Like, the pigmen are dying, but nothing's coming through any hopper. Do, do I... No, you know, if I, if I start mining and stuff, it's going to break. I just use it for XP, but yeah, no gold ever comes through. Now, that's weird. I'll not risk breaking it, though, because, of course, I have a way better gold farm, which I might as well use. And this time, my aim is to definitely have enough gold blocks 
so that I don't have to come here again and I can finish the Golden Palace. Let's just get busy getting as much gold as I can. I think that's long enough spent here. Been collecting quite a bit of gold. I really hope this time it's going to be enough. For now, I'm just going to place these shulker boxes down and put the gold there. Because at this moment in time, I'm, I'm not quite ready to finish it. There's another project a bit more pressing that I want to get done. And that means, once again, getting the red wool as well as some obsidian. And then going to the place that I, I did say was kind of forbidden. Yes, that's right. The land of the bat switch which has the red markers that must not be crossed. And right about here is going to be, I reckon, the perfect spot. In fact, on second thoughts, I can actually build it way closer to those red markers. Like, right about here. Look forward to when I build a machine to disable you guys as well. But yeah, more elevated for this one is the right place for it. Next, I need to fly back over here, grab the red wool, and make yet another border so that I don't go into the danger area. The only annoying thing is I haven't got any lily pads. And they'll probably become quite important eventually when I have to start placing them back in the ocean. Thank Hopefully at the moment it's all on land, although that's that's still kind of annoying because you've got to go across trees. Yeah, I've, um, I've not got much better at making straight lines, have I? See, even water that's not deep like this is still very annoying. Wouldn't it be nice if I could spot a swamp nearby? Well, at the very least, it's worth giving it a try, you know? It saved me flying all the way home. You know it's it's not going to be a good job when uh, you've got more success finding jungles than you, you have finding swamps. Well, there's, there's, there's no swamps as far as the eye can see. So instead, I'm just going to give up, make a portal, and get them from my house. All this way for a couple of lily pads. Although it's actually not going to be just for a couple the lily pads because I'm going to grab a load of other resources as well that I'll need to make the glow squid switch. That's almost all of it, but I also need to go to my newest chest and get tinted glass. Realistically, not sure that'll be enough of the glass, so I'm grabbing the materials to make more just in case. Don't think there's enough in this shulker box, but I've got an amethyst farm right here, which could get me loads more. I knew this farm would come in handy one of these days. And now to go back to the mob switch site. It has a rune portal and a gold block. Normally, I'm not interested in gold blocks. But since I started that new gold palace project, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. It's also super difficult to get to the portal that auto-generated. Because it spawned in one of these massive caves. And I've got to, like, dig to it to get to it. Not to worry, though. It's been found. More gold. There's two blocks at this one. And I tell you what, glistering melons are going to be very useful very shortly. You'll soon see why. I've reached this border again. And it needs to be continued in this direction. Almost into the jungle. But not quite, it's, it's just mainly over water. Which is exactly why I got these lily pads. Perfect, the entire board is done. Which means the next bit can be started. Step one, remove this portal and build a new one above the nether. I've made a good start on the redstone, completed the portals, and I'm ready to do the rest of the building. Definitely a lot faster to build the second time around, now that I know exactly what I'm doing. It's almost there. Just need a shovel in this dropper so that it, uh, you know, they can detect the comparator's got some. There also needs to be iron nuggets. Well, just 24 iron items for the hopper clock. Finally, I'll spawn proof all this. There is one thing that I did forget to bring, and that is the two buckets of lava, and also the millions of flint and steel. So there's lava in here, flint in this one, followed by even more flint, and finally more lava. That's yet another of these completed, and I want to make a quick journey back home, sadly on foot, because I've run out of firework rockets. And unfortunately, sugarcane and paper supplies are very low, but I do have plenty of gunpowder. And if I just jump on down here, swim super, super fast, and arrive at spawn and, and realize I... I need fire rockets to get up there. So I'll swim all the way back, use the nether tunnel, and get to spawn that way. Minecraft would be just so much slower without a light threat and fire rockets. Anyway, there's some sugar cane here, and even more on this side. But compared to the bamboo, I'm, I'm not really happy with the reserves I've got. But anyway, that's something to worry about some other time. And I actually have loads of paper there anyway, so I don't, don't know, I don't know what my problem is. I just sometimes completely forget what I'm doing in Minecraft. That's a job well done. Next, I need sponge, and also snowballs, which I apparently don't have a chest for. And I also don't have an easy way to get them, because this shovel is still touched. So I'm hoping there's none- Ah, there is, perfect. A non silt touch shovel combined with this snow golem that I can fill up this shulker box. You'll soon see why snowballs are incredibly, incredibly useful. So firstly, the farm needs to be five chunks in this direction. Same position relative to it as the bat farm was. The only difference is that glow squids only spawn at level 30 or below. So I'm going to dig out the entire chunk at this level. Next, I'll make a portal in the middle. But when this portal is lit, glow squids won't spawn because it'll create too much light. Unless I place tinted glass. This is black stained glass. Got, got the wrong thing. <laughs> that would not be very useful at all. Instead, yes, the tinted glass. And before I actually place it all down, I've had a bit of an idea for a redstone system to make this even better. But doing that will require some sticky pistons. Apparently, sticky piston reserves are a little bit low, so it's uh, it's onto the slime balls to convert the ones that I've already got. Then all the way along here, they can be placed down on both sides. And then, of course, I can realize that I put them at the wrong height and they actually need to be down here. Also do the same with these. Tinted glass on top, followed by repeaters and red stone once again on both sides with a lever right here okay you know i think that's working well we'll put some more tinted glass here now the ground needs to go back and the size of the rooms need extending a bit more tinted glass is needed just to 
finish off these edges. And then comes the ice. Because without water, you wouldn't get many glow squids spawning. Last time I might as well get torches as well. Just to light this up. Because of the, the tinted glass, it's not going to affect anything. And whilst I do have a bat switch, the, the, yeah, it's not currently in use as you can see. So stopping them from spawning would also be a nice bonus. That should be everything complete. The glow squid farm done, or at least for the glow squid switch. Right here, I must begin building up very, very high for the AFK spot. And the real question is now, did it actually get me some glow squid? Since I've so far managed to spawn a wandering trader and a pillager patrol. But can glow squids be added to that list? Sadly, they can't, but that is probably because there's caves around me. And I need to make sure that there's no water in them. It's exactly the reason why I brought the sponge. I'm also making the spawning platform slightly higher so that less caves are included. And this time, it's working perfectly. We've got glow squid. So I can open that up. Some have gone through themselves. And some need a little extra encouragement. Which could happen if you just hit them with a snowball. Look at the, look at the way they just fly. They go so far from the, uh, the knockback. So we'll just uh, coach you in. Any moment now, you're going to go that way. Oh, you're a little bit high up. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting problem. I have to let you fly underneath again. Right. I may, may need to modify that so that pistons move those up as well. And you'd think that that would completely complete everything. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. In fact, you can see the little remnants of it here. Look at that. Glow ink sacks. Yes, because the glow squid, you can't really see because I'm stuck in the portal. But the glow squid die. Because there's no oxygen and, well, there's no water and they, they need water. However, there's no need to worry. I have a way to solve that problem too. Redstone going like that. And comparator, lever, subtraction mode. You go like that. As you can see, it's constantly using that dispenser. Then we've got hoppers with chests on top. And I'm going to fill quite a few of these full of healing pots. That's what it's going to take to keep these squid alive. Also, before I forget, I should probably build the chunk loader on this side too, as well as finally spawn proof the top of this portal. That's job done nicely. Also, once the glow squid are in lazy chunks, they will no longer need water. They won't drown or anything. They'll will you guys just leave me alone for once? Seriously, I cannot wait to make a machine that disables you guys. Oh my goodness, look at the lightning. Look at this. One went through a portal and he's absolutely on a mission now. It's... <laughs> I've never seen them do this. Look how fast he's gliding. Oh, he's finally discovered me now. Phantoms in the nether. Also flying in completely the wrong direction. I don't think he'll be able to keep up with me. Apparently the storage is kind of broken. That one's all right, but why have we got all these random items going? Better get more blockers and fix the problem. Just annoying because now I've got to manually take everything out and send it back through the system. Now, before I go ahead and get myself the millions and millions of health pods that I need, I think I'd just first like to see if I can possibly finish this build. Anything's possible, so we'll uh, we'll soon see. I tell you what, I might just do it. I've still got a good amount of gold left in this shulker box, and the build is starting to get pretty high. It's not a million miles away from where it needs to be, so I'll keep going and hope for the best. I'm starting to get to the final few bits up here. I'm getting so, so close to the top, and would you believe it? I've run out of gold blocks. I'm, I'm literally nearly there. Don't get much more annoying than that, does it? Right, we're going to the gold farm and finishing this once and for all. This is quickly becoming Minecraft, but at AFK for gold all the time. Stole that joke from uh, from my editor, by the way. <laughs> that should be enough time, especially since I've got the other blocks of gold that I've been uh, crafting up <laughs> in there. It may have been a few thousand blocks in the making, but it is finally done. Also want to kind of clear out the snow on this pathway and get rid of this beacon, finish the path and replace the snow. From there, I want to fly back to the top, jump down this hole and have there be a beacon right here. I think I've just about got enough space for it to be a full beacon too, by the looks of things, which will be absolutely perfect. I'll get haste from it. I think that's going to be the most helpful. And just to change the way the top is, I'd like a bit of yellow stained glass, a, a pane we'll just have to do. And also five carpets. Conveniently, two wool makes three. And then that's with the two, that makes five. Quick maths with SB. Make that beam yellow. Cover it all up. And there it is. The golden palace is complete. And I have to say, I am very, very impressed with it. A place fit to become immortal, but we're, we're not ready for that just yet. No, I still need to make the squid switch, get a load more nut chapels, and then I'll be ready to do it. Get infinite hearts in hardcore. Never been done before. I could also do a quickly repair my elytra. They're looking worse for wear. And this gold farm should easily do the trick. So now it's to sort out my problem with the health pots. I'm going to keep the contraption relatively simple. One day I should make an amazing brew, but we haven't got that much time left, so I've, you know, I've got to get on with things. <laughs> That's all the building materials. Don't actually need all that redstone, by the way. And I also do need quite a few nuggets just to go inside the hoppers and stuff. Now, eventually, maybe an offshoot of this room needs to be a mass brewer. But right now, I'm keeping it short, simple, sweet. So I'll make the contraption right here. This is what I've got so far. These droppers will contain the ingredients that will go into the hoppers and into the brewing stand. This is where the timer items are going to go. And then these are more for a, a sorting kind of thing so that, you know, only one item can go in at a time. And there we go. It's done. The redstone's here. It's just, you know, I ain't going to explain it all. It just is the way it detects stuff. And then if it detects that it's on and, and the, that this is now the machine can be on, that's off. Yeah, it, 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 it all works though. At least we're going to find out if it works anyway. As you know, blaze powder is going to be very, 
very important. And of course, bottles. They're going to be very, very necessary. You can use this farm to get more nether wart. Just a planting that's unfortunately a lot of effort. Also need the glistering melon slices, gunpowder, and glowstone dust. Just going to expand this a little bit. Because it's going to be filled with water bottles and, you know, you need plenty of space for that. Also can put a little bit of glowstone down here with ice on top to make water to fill the bottles. Now let's add these to here. Once I add a million water bottles, the machine should be ready to go. Uh, now, it's, it, I think it... I don't know if it's... Yeah, I've done something wrong. Oh, I've just got to wait for these, these nuggets to come across. All right, I was, I was a little bit worried for a second there. There we go. Now... Okay, this is not working properly. Okay, well, now it is working properly, but that's not meant to do that. Let's just get those out of there. Obviously, just one or two teething problems as it gets going. But everything's flowing through nicely. And this chest is filling up. Okay, but not with you, it isn't. I was having issues, but I realised that this is meant to be two ticks delay. I had it on one before, so now I've uh, I fixed it. And now it works beautifully. I've turned it off now, but I had to make a few modifications to this to make it work properly. I added a, a nice little T flip-flop thing here because it was sending two pulses, so I kind of factored that into the design. Put an extra repeat here because this was going off and then letting extra bottles and stuff. So yeah, we've got loads and loads. In fact, I don't even think I have the space to take all of them. I'd better pop to my house and grab an extra shulker box or two. And apparently somewhere along the line, I did run out of glowstone. So these ones are, are just healing one. I see there's a lot that are just healing one. And I don't think that'll be good enough for the, the squid. So we need all, just only the healing two ones. But all of that should be more than enough. Now let's fly all the way back up here. Add all of them to the machine. There's three double chest worth. It should be enough. I really hope all this works because th th this is something I haven't tested too extensively. I, I have tested it once, but there's no 100% guarantee. So I begin by turn this off. Uh, well, on, should I say? And it's, it's uh, dispatched them all. As you can see, I've got to get out of here ASAP before it runs out of them, <laughs> when there's not even squid in there. Then we fly up to the top here, and I would say wait for squid to spawn, but I have a sneaky suspicion that I forgot to flick the lever that will turn off the light of the portal. Yeah, I did. So whilst we have got a squid all the way in the corner there, more will be able to spawn now that it's much darker. According to F3, seven have spawned, and at least three of those seven are down here, which isn't too bad of a rate. Don't you do that. Get back in there. Come on. That's it. Go through. Come on. Let's keep you where we want you to be. I'll try and send them through at like the same kind of time. So through and through because there's going to be a bit of a portal cooldown, you see. I know what I'm, I'm trying to say. Basically, every time something goes through the portal, it loads those chunks. Meaning that for 15 seconds, the squid are taking damage, the, the potions are being dispensed. So if I send one after another for 15, then 15, I'm going to use more potions. And I, I don't know if I quite have enough for that. So sending as many through as I can at the same time is the goal. Pretty sure there's now enough glow squid in there. But I'm going to send through one more batch just to be sure. There we go. Hopefully they don't die. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully this just works. I suppose now it's time for the real moment truth. I'm actually really worried that I didn't get enough health pots. There is already some that, that have sadly died but the question is will there be enough alive left i've got to i've got to act fast when i get through um i i think we ran out of things we ran out to oh, sbu absolute idiots i've done the calculations and i now know what, what i must do first grab more glowstone dust trade with this guy to grab loads of glass craft more glistering melons then use this machine to brew loads and also manually brew them. I've sat here brewing for quite some time and I've got like pretty much four shulker boxes worth, which in my opinion is a pretty solid amount of work. And the auto brewer has also been working away, but nowhere near as fast as manually doing five at once, because obviously this is just doing one brewing stand speed at once. Other ones are doing five. Yeah, way, way quicker. I, I think, guys, I've got no choice but to suspend the glow squid switch. I really try not to go over time and I've still got to get infinite hearts, now, I, I can do it with the notch apples I've got. I, I maybe wanted more. I know I have some notch apples left over, but that doesn't matter. We're just we're just going to have to power through. You've watched the entire video to see how this is going to be done, so, you know, I, I, I can't disappoint you. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's become immortal in hardcore Minecraft. I've got the notch apples. Like, 96 is probably enough. This is, ironically, the first episode which I didn't get any new notch apples as well. The, the one where I wanted them. Let's not worry about that. Let's craft loads of golden apples. I think that many should be enough. As long as I have the same amount of notch apples and golden apples, I'm fine. So, yeah, I've got, I've got loads of them. That's good. I was also going to make a machine that automates this. But it can be done manually as well. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just not going to waste time with, with creating dispensers. But I'm still going to stand right here in my spot. So, all you have to do, and I better get this right, is if you eat a notch apple, okay, and then straight away eat a golden apple, n nothing happens. It, it didn't work. Just kidding, just kidding. It gives you absorption four, as you can see on the right, and watch what happens when that absorption runs out. It's got just two seconds left, but now watch my heart to the bottom. It runs out, and do I... I don't lose all my absorption. I still have six hearts. Now, what happens if I eat another notch apple... 
followed by a gold apple. Oh my goodness. Look how many I've got now. And just wait another two minutes for that to run out. I now have 12 hearts. It's 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 OP, as you can see. Um, and then I just go like this. And do that. And uh, yeah, you can, you can guess what's going to happen next. And look at this. It runs out, and then it does another two seconds of it, and then that stops. And because it's like you get double absorption because you have two golden apples, I've now got 28 hearts in total. These don't run out, by the way. These just act as normal hearts. I don't really want to take damage because I don't want to use them up, but I've got to prove it to you. If I go like this... Okay, well, I didn't take damage. My armor's too good. Oh, well, the snow's coming as well, but if I go like this... Look at that. I lost half heart, but it's it's still there. I mean, they don't they don't regen, but they, they just stay there. It's going to really annoy me that I'm just going to have half a heart now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> can I lose the other half, please? Thank you. There we go. And I can just keep going. I'll just do it again. Now I've got over 30 hearts. It just basically takes me two minutes to get an extra six hearts every time. But it's an insane trick. I mean, I'm I am going to be undefeatable by the time. If I have every single one of these Notch Apples, I'll have 600 hearts. Yeah, try dying with 600 hearts. <laughs> That's a ridiculous amount. For now, I'll just focus on getting to 100. And once I eat this, followed by another one, I have over 100 hearts in total. It's just difficult to see because the more you have, they like stack together. They don't spread out as much. I have got a little bit over time, but... I don't know, I, I want way more hearts. I'm just going to keep waiting every two minutes, so I can't really speed this up. So I'm, I'm just going to continue to, to get a load more. And whilst I haven't used up all my nut shovels yet, I, I think I've got more than enough hearts. I'm not going to keep going because, you know, it's time. The video's yeah, it's gone on long enough, basically. But I think it's safe to say with this many hearts, I'm pretty much immortal in hardcore.